everyone welcome to real knowledge club summit today we have a truly a fascinating guest with us who is one of the thought leaders in the internet online marketing space the og he has interviewed some of the top entrepreneurs including russell branson he has worked with him and he has transformed so many people lives across the world and i know him since almost like 5 years from the sam owens mastermind group and the click funnels community and he is none other than like josh forty who has done over like 30 million dollar in the online space in the last 8 months generated more than 2.5 million dollars in sales and the most craziest thing is like he he does it with complete organic without running paid ads and more than 1.5 million dollar cash collected and Josh is a perfect mentor to guide you and help you out to grow by having a podcast talk show and how you can reach out to your target audience at the same time charge high ticket clients and serve them and have a dream life and uh, his transparency simplicity inspires us without any further delay let's all welcome Josh from my bottom of my heart to the real knowledge club summit Hey, man, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, and uh, I'm glad we could finally get this done. You've been following up for a while, so I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, once again, for taking your super valuable time. I'm so excited for this day. Right? And Josh, I'm so curious to know, for all the people who are watching this, uh, we want to know about your story, right? Like your backstory. How did you get started right, into like podcasting? What was your exact motive and your vision back then? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, it's a great question. And well, I'll start here. First off, like I said, thank you so much for having me on. And uh, today uh, I'm looking forward to sharing about the Golden Mike Method, like we, you talked about. And uh, just to reiterate, uh, we'll talk through how in the last eight months or so, uh, since we rolled this out to clients, we had a handful of clients, less than 40 of them go through and do uh, over two and a half million, closing on $3 million in sales uh, without ads, over 1.6 million cash collected, um, all, all using uh, the, the golden mic platform and, uh, we'll kind of break down that process of it. But, uh, you asked me about my backstory. I think probably much like you and probably a lot of your listeners, um, tell me if this sounds familiar. I mean, I don't come from, like, I don't come from money. I don't come from, uh, you know, I don't have any special talents. I'm not an athlete. Uh, I certainly didn't grow up with a billionaire Rolodex, right? Did you? No, not at all. <laughs> Not at all, right? And so I think we're probably a lot more similar than you know many people might think. Uh, I grew up on a, a, a farm in, in Indiana in the middle of nowhere, right? And I got into entrepreneurship because I wanted to be free. I wanted to you know be successful and make money and have freedom and, and all of those things. And so I think that a lot of us as entrepreneurs, I'm, I'm sure you and your listeners are probably uh, in the same boat. Like we became entrepreneurs because entrepreneur, not only was it the, the, the thing that we thought would get us to what we wanted, but it was just really who we are, right? Like we, we are, we are cut from a different cloth. We are, we are not like most of the world, right? Like we are literally, we literally couldn't like, we look at the rest of the world and we go, none of this makes any sense. Right. And I vividly remember, you know, in my teens looking around at people being like, I don't understand any of you guys. Like, I don't understand like your, your model for the world or like your plan. It makes no sense. So anyway, I became an entrepreneur. And uh, I, I was excited uh, because I was naive and I started, I started trying to sell, sell my services, sell training, st sell stuff like that. And um, I got hit in the face with reality, right? Like it was, it's hard, right? Like the excitement wears off after a little bit when all of a sudden there's bills to pay and you're not making much. You know what I'm talking about? True. hundred percent. hundred percent. Right. And so, um, but I, I mean, I was committed to being an entrepreneur. I was, I was committed to making it work. And so after a while though, you know, a year went by and then two years and then three years and then four years. And it's like, I, I would rather sleep under a bridge and be homeless than quit. Like I will make this work if it kills me. But at some point I kind of reached this point where I was like, I'm just, I'm sick and tired of not winning. You know what I mean? Like I was, I had some, I wasn't like losing per se. Like I wasn't like, I was able to pay the bills and I was, you know, I had some success to kind of keep my head above water here and there. But it's like, you know, when you like look around and it's just like, I am not winning like I know I could be winning or should be winning. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I just got, I, I got sick and tired of that, dude. And I was like, I, I did not start this journey of entrepreneurship. I didn't start, you know, going down this path to wake up in four years and basically be right where I'm at and where I started, if that makes sense, right? Or, or make slow growth. And it was frustrating because like, 
I wanted freedom. I wanted, I wanted success and I wasn't getting it. And I, and I couldn't figure out why, right? You ever been there? Yes, absolutely. Learning so many things, nothing is working out. <laughs> and you're just like, you're just like, how is it that I'm the only one that can't figure this out? You know what I mean? Now, obviously that's not true. There's lots of people that don't figure it out. In fact, only a few do, right? But it feels like you're the only one that does. It's like, how is it me that can't make this work, right? And so I, I reached a point where I was like, okay, I've got to stop thinking that I'm special, right? Like mm -hmm. I got to stop thinking like I'm the exception to the rule and like I'm the only one that can't make it. I got to stop thinking like I have all the answers. I've got to do it my way, right? If, because that's only gotten me right here. And so I did, you know, the thing that uh, I think that every entrepreneur should do, I, I think that it is probably the only or one of the only at least like true shortcuts to success that I have found, which is getting around people that are smarter than you are, that have what you want, and that you would basically be embarrassed to let down, right? Like that, that kind of force you to level up, right? Like if you get around a room of wealthy people or successful people, you wouldn't want to let them down. You wouldn't want to embarrass yourself, right? Absolutely. And I'm like, I just remember sitting there going, okay, I'm tired of losing or I'm tired of not winning. I'm tired of being like, I'm tired of feeling in this, like I'm sure you felt. And I went, okay, how do I change this? I got to go get around people that are smarter than me because I'm pretty dumb and I got to go learn. I've got to stop acting like I'm, I'm special. How do I do that? Now here's the deal, dude. I don't know about you, but once again, I did not come from money. So I didn't have the money to go hire a uh, a $50,000 coach at the time, right? I didn't have the, you know, the money to just go drop on masterminds. And so I was kind of in this weird predicament where it was like, okay, I need to go get coaches. I need to go get around smart people. I need to go learn but so that I can go make money, but I need money in order to go get the coaches, right? I need money to go get around them. So I was like, okay, how do I, how do I solve this problem? Like, let me get creative. Let me get outside the box. We're entrepreneurs, we're problem solvers, right? It's who we are at a core. And so I was like, all right, well, I remember when I was 16 years old, that I wanted to own a hardware store. And I wrote a letter to the, the president to do it best hardware. And uh, he, you know, I asked him, I was like, hey, can I come have a meeting with you? And guess what? Because I was 16 years old, I gave him a great reason as to why I wanted to meet with him. I got to go sit and meet with him in person because I was like, I gave him a reason. I had you know, something that allowed me to go and create that opportunity. And so I was like, well, what if I start a podcast? And the whole premise of the podcast is I'm going to go interview smart people because they're not going to say yes to me. Right. It's not like I can just like call up a bunch of billionaires or a bunch of rich people and be like, hey, can I try to sell you something? Right. Or hey, will you take they're like gonna be like, no, right? So, but I was like, okay, what if I just went and I create a podcast and I interview successful people and I give them a platform? And this was key, rather than trying to talk about what I want to talk about, just talk about what they want to talk about. And so I did. I, I launched the podcast and you know, long story short, I start interviewing these people. And, you know, after several of these, these interviews that I was doing, I start, you know, I start learning stuff. I start making these connections and it's like, awesome. I'm so broke. Right. But then one day I interviewed this guy and very, very wealthy, successful guy, right? Multi eight figures of real estate, you know, multiple seven figure companies, very successful. Right. And like, he's not easy to get a hold of. Like I'm friends with him now. And like, I've, I've personally seen people like offer him $15,000 in the DM for like a coaching call with them. And he's just like, Ugh. Like, I don't, I don't have the time for it, right? Like, very difficult to get a hold of. But because I had a podcast, right? And because I gave him this platform, he was like, sure, I'll, I'll come on and do the podcast. And so we sit down, we chat for a couple hours, had a great conversation. And uh, afterwards, he, uh, he looks at me and he goes, dude, that was amazing. Like, that was so much fun. I, I really, really like you. Like, that was, that was such an awesome interview. Um, I'd be interested in hiring you. And I'm like, freaking out. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like I'm used to selling like $5,000 services and like struggling to do that. And here's this guy with like tons of money and successful, like wants to hire me. Right. You know, it's like that freak out moment. And so I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, sure. hundred percent. So like, let me ask you a couple questions. And so I ended up asking him a couple questions and he's like, Hey, can you send me over some information about what that would look like? I need it by tomorrow. I'm meeting with my team and, uh, yeah, send me it over. And so like, I'm in panic mode because like, I was, you know, I built funnels and did all the things, right? But like, I, you ever, you ever think your funnels are great or like think your marketing or your branding is all great until you meet like a really successful person that wants to see it. And then you're just like, I was so embarrassed. I would never, ever send anybody to this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Absolutely. I was like, I can't do that. All right. I can't send her this because this is embarrassing. All right. So instead 
I opened up a Google document and I just wrote down like, hey, here's what you said your problem was. Here's how we could solve it. And I just kind of outlined. It was just two pages long. And um, I ended up sending that, that document over to him. And uh, a couple of days later, he texted me back. He was like, hey, we're in. And uh, later that week, he wired me thirty thousand dollars, thirty grand, dude. Thirty. It was. It was a. Like it was the most money I'd ever made before in a transaction ever. And I didn't even have a sales call. Like you know those moments in your life where you're like, I don't know what just happened, but I got to do more of that. Right. Okay. Like that was the moment. And so that was the kind of the, this moment that like the uh, my eyes were opened, where I was like, wait a second, hold on. I've been selling to the wrong people, right? Mm -hmm. I've been playing in the wrong world, right? Like there is a world, a network, a reality over here that I am not part of or that I have not been a part of that, that is so radically completely different than the world that I've been operating in, right? Like you ever like look at, you know, it seems like there's like a, a, a cool kids club, a, a bunch of rich people that all hang out and buy from each other, right? It's like, I mean, it's kind of true. That's kind of how it was. And it was like for the first time in my life, I realized that that was a possibility and I could make far more money and I could, I could serve my clients way better if I sold to that world. And having this podcast, we call it the Golden Mic, was the catalyst. It, it was this thing that like simply by having it, it created that opportunity, right? Like if I wouldn't have had it, if I wouldn't have had the podcast, if I wouldn't have had the Golden Mic, if I wouldn't have had this platform, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to get into that world. But because I had the platform, because it was set up correctly, because we had the golden mic, the opportunity was created to get in front of somebody that I would not have otherwise been able to get in front of. And that introduced me to a new world and, and completely and utterly changed my life. Um, and uh, yeah, so went on to make, you know, we can talk about the results and all that. But like, that's the premise of kind of the backstory and how I got into uh, what I do now. That's so, so wonderful, right? Like you have went through that tough times and like you started from zero, you didn't had inherited like wealth, like where uh, you had a billionaire, someone guiding you while you were getting started, right? Through your podcast, like you were able to connect. That's wonderful. Yeah. And Josh, I wanted to know what exactly is the golden mic method, right? Why the word gold? And what is the mic? Because I'm also from KG of the Kolar Gold Fields, <laughs> right? I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the golden mic, I mean, it's a microphone that's, work, that's worth its weight in gold, right? Like, <laughs> I made my first million dollars using the golden mic method. I made my second million dollars using the golden mic method, right? Selling services to wealthy people, right? Because when you sell to wealthy people, when you sell to people with money, you get to play in the wealthy people's world. Right. And one of my one of my favorite quotes of all time, like life changing quote uh, in the world of business is by Alex Ramosi. And he, he said, uh, solve the problems of the rich and they will make you one of them. Right. Solve the problems of the rich and they will make you one of them. Sell the wealthy people, sell to people with money, solve their problems. And my problem up until this point was I wasn't able to get in front of those people. It wasn't that I wasn't able to deliver for those people. It was I couldn't get in front of them. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the golden microphone gave me the ability to go and do that. And so when, you know, when people hear, you know, oh, uh, it's the secrets of podcast or a microphone or like whatever, the real principle to remember here is this. It's how do I create a platform? How do I like, how do I have a microphone the golden, that creates opportunities that I would not otherwise have if I didn't have it, right? right. So for example, uh, as I kind of break this, break down the golden mic myth, because that's what you asked for, right? Like what's Absolutely. the tactical application of this, right? Because like this, like without this platform, I was, I was the person that just was stuck, that, that I was the person that's, that like tried really hard but did not progress and lived in the fear of I don't want to wake up in three years and everybody that's been watching me still see me at the level that I've been at. Like that like, was the ultimate failure to me, right? And so the golden microphone was not only the thing that massively increased my income, right, to the tunes of millions of dollars, but also is the thing that put me into the next level. But it's because we fundamentally structure the podcast differently than most entrepreneurs structure their podcast. Okay. So I'm going to break this down. Okay. So I want you to think, sorry, say what? Yes. Yes. Continue. continue. Okay, cool. So let, let, uh, I want you to think about, you know, the average entrepreneur here for a second, right? They go, okay, we're going to, we're going to start a podcast, right? Russell Brunson told me to do it or Gary Vaynerchuk told me to do it, whoever, right? We're going to go start a podcast. And so they look around and they go, well, 
Joe Rogan has a big podcast, right? Like they look at their favorite influencer, right? And so they go try to model that. And so mm. when you when you think about it, like Joe Rogan has a bunch of listeners, but like who is Joe Rogan's customer? Do you know? Yeah. It's mostly, customer? it's mostly the person he's actually interviewing. He's interviewing all the big names. Nope, that's not his, he doesn't sell to them. Okay. The people he's, who are watching it, uh, he's advertising. No, he's not selling to his listeners either. Joe Rogan sells to advertisers. Advertisers oh, okay. pay Joe Rogan. That's where Joe Rogan gets paid, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that means that Joe Rogan, his product, what he actually sells is his listener's attention. Meaning if you listen to Joe Rogan, you are his product. Right. And he mm. sells your attention to advertisers. Okay. And so does that make sense though? Absolutely. I got so he it. goes and he wants to interview big names, controversial people, people that will get views so that he gets more listens so he can sell that to advertisers. Right. Yep. But then entrepreneurs yes. like us, we come along and we go, Oh, we're going to go like, you know, and we're going to be like Joe Rogan. And so we go, well, I'll just do what I'll be a marketer for a second. Right. Like most, this is what most marketers do. They go, okay. So here's, I'm a marketer. So if I'm a marketer and I'm going to start a podcast, what am I going to start? What's my podcast going to be about if I'm a normal marketer? It's, you may think like I, I need to market my products to the yeah. listeners who are watching it. I'm going to, it's going to be about marketing. It's going to be about marketing it's, and business, whatever, right? So I'm a marketer. I'm going to start a podcast about marketing. And then ooh. we go and we're like, okay, we're going to try to go get a bunch of listeners. But do we sell to advertisers? Do we sell ads? Like, do you go and sell advertising no. space on your platform? No. 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 So no. all of a sudden now, it's like, the way that Joe Rogan makes money, we don't make money that way because that's not how we sell. So now it's like, okay, cool. We go, okay, well, what if I Joe and I'm going to go and I'm going to be like Joe Rogan. So I'm going to try to sell marketing services though to my listeners. So I'm going to have a podcast about marketing. I'm going to try to sell the listeners, which is not what Joe Rogan does, but we don't realize that because we're, you know, we don't realize, right? Yes. And so you go and you start talking about marketing. Now, if I have a podcast about marketing and I'm going to try to be like Joe Rogan, that means I'm going to interview people, right? So it's, if it's, I have a podcast about marketing, who, what type of people am I going to interview? You are going to interview the topmost marketers in that space? Or right, like you're going to interview marketers, right? So now it's like, okay, wait a second. So now I'm going to bring on other marketers. So now yeah. what I'm doing is I, I can't sell to my advertisers because I don't have them. Mm -hmm. And now all of my listeners, I'm telling them, hey, if you want an expert in marketing, I'm not the expert. You should listen to the, this guy. So now you're literally promoting all of your competition, mm. right? So you don't make money from advertisers. You don't make money from your listeners now, right? I had a 1.5 million download podcast. I made more money from a 3,000 person email list than I did from my 1.5 million downloads, right? Crazy. And so that's like, okay, well, cool. Well, who's the only other person we could sell to? <laughs> well, okay, I could sell to the person I'm interviewing, but if you're a marketer, you solve marketing problems. If you're interviewing marketers, do they have marketing problems? No. No, because they're a marketer. So you no. don't sell to advertisers. You can't sell to the people you're interviewing. And all of your listeners, you're promoting your competition. This is how most entrepreneurs go and build their podcasts. And they oh, wonder why they don't make any money. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It's crazy, right? Like it's insanity. And like, we just be, but we don't realize it. And so we have this definite, like, it's, you know, we, we try this thing over and over and over. It's like, well, you don't even have a path to monetization anyway. Okay. So yeah. what I did is I was like, okay, wait a second. I, as an entrepreneur, like you, same thing. Like, what do we do? How do we get paid? We get paid very simply put. Like, I think we as entrepreneurs way overcomplicate what it takes to make money. All right. We get right. paid to solve people's problems. That's it. Someone yes. has a problem. We know how to solve it. They're willing to pay us to solve it. That's it. That's the only way we make money. So I go, okay, wait a second. Let's go all the way back for a second. And Josh mm. is working so ridiculously hard, right? And he's trying to put in effort and he's struggling to go and like make money and get clients and whatever. And it's like, I was in this ball of confusion because I was listening to YouTube channels and webinars and trainings and books and all of this stuff that I just didn't even look at the basics, right? Like imagine like trying to go fix a car and you couldn't even fix, like you didn't even know what was wrong with the car. Or even worse, imagine you didn't even know it was a car. It's like, how do you fix it? You can't, right? 
So I was like, okay, wait a second. Let me go back to the basics for a second. What's my actual problem? What's the thing I need? My problem was I couldn't get in front of my ideal customer, right? I couldn't get in front of wealthy people. And so I was like, well, if I want to get in front of wealthy people, maybe I should just create a podcast that isn't about marketing, but it's about something that wealthy people want to talk about. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And so where most entrepreneurs go and what they do is they optimize their podcast for listens and views. And I'm here to tell you, it's like, that's not going to get you in front of the people you think it's going to get you in front of. Like maybe long-term eventually someday, but like that's not what's going to make you money now. What we do is we don't optimize for listens and views. We optimize for our ideal customer. We optimize to build a platform that our ideal client, the wealthy clients, actually want to come talk to us about. Does it make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes sense. And so while everybody else in my space that was a marketer, right? Like while they were all out there having marketing and funnel podcasts, I was like, I'm not going to talk about marketing and funnels. I'm going to talk about other stuff. I'm going to go and be like, what do wealthy people, what do rich people, what do people that have, are successful, what do they want to talk about? And I'm going to offer to talk about that. And I, I mean, I'd have people come, we talk about politics and religion and money and, and you know, uh, you know I have one guy talk about psychedelic drugs, right? And it's like, we're talking about these controversial, crazy things that have nothing to do with marketing. And then seven days later, they're wiring me $30,000. Why? Because... They don't want to talk about marketing. They want to talk about what they want to talk about. And mm. this is the key of getting people on your show, right? Because the number one thing I would hear from people is they'd be like, well, how, how, do I get, how do I get people on? How do I get them to say yes? And I go, give them the ability to talk about something they want to talk about, right? I, like right. here's what most people do. Hey, I got a podcast. Will you do me a favor and come talk about your expertise on it? Like, you're you asking them for a favor. They don't know you. They don't owe you anything, right? Why would a wealthy person do that? But if right. I can flip the script and I go, how do I frame this as a favor to them, right? How do I frame? I go, okay, well, what if I reached out to them and instead of, hey, will you do me a favor and come talk about what I want you to talk about so it benefits me? What if I said, hey, I know you love talking about this topic, whatever the thing is. Do you want to come and talk about that? And we promote those ideas out to the world and make you look awesome in that category. Absolutely. If they say yes to that, it's are awesome. they doing me a favor or am I doing them a favor? You are doing them a favor. Right. So the key here is, is to get them to talk about something that they want to talk about, right? 100%. And I'll give you the perfect example. You know Russell Brunson, right? <laughs> right. Russell Brunson, when he first came on my podcast, he reached out to me to, to be on the show because Russell Brunson wanted to geek out about Atlas Shrugged. Okay. And so when Russell Brunson, he reads this book, he's geeking out about it. He's like, I want to go talk about it on a podcast somewhere. He looks around at all the podcasts. I actually asked him this. All right. Like when I, I this yes. case, right? He looks around at all the podcasts in the ClickFunnels space. And that what was are all the, the podcasts question about? I had. So how you huh? got connected with Russell? <laughs> Say what? That was the question, which was, I was very curious how you got connected with Russell Brunson. Okay, here you go, right? So Russell looks around at all the podcasts in the ClickFunnels space. And what is everybody trying to make their podcast about? Talking about marketing, talking about funnels. Marketing, funnels. They're trying to impress business. They're trying to impress Russell or they're trying to impress people about their skill set. And Russell's yes. over there like, I just want to geek out about like I'm, I, he's willing to talk about podcasts, but he has a million options. He wants to talk about Atlas Shrugged. He wanted to talk about this book. He was geeking out about it. And so when he looked around at all the different podcasts, he was like, oh, Josh, yours, I knew I could go on there and we could have a long form conversation about this. And so we ended up, he reached out. He was like, hey, you know, can, can I come on your show? And we, we geek out about this. Long story short, next thing we knew, I ended up flying out to Boise, Idaho in ClickFunnels headquarters at like nine o'clock at night. And we talked for three and a half hours and he streamed it live to his entire audience, Facebook, YouTube, wow. everything. Insanity, right? I didn't pay for that. I didn't, you know, like, I, not, why? That was there. The reason he was willing to do that was because I had a golden mic. I had a platform that created opportunities that would not be there if I didn't have it, right? It was a platform where it was about things that he wanted to talk about, right? 
And so because he wanted to talk about Atlas Shrugged, I connected with him on Atlas Shrugged. Because Brad Gibb wanted to come and talk about money and investing, I connected with him on there. And so creating this platform that's not about the listener, right? It's not that we don't care about the listener. So we just can't optimize for them. That cannot be our first optimization, right? It's about what our guest wants to, the people that we want to build the relationships with. Because I don't really care about being famous as much as I care about making money. I want to be famous, but I want a network of wealthy clients. I want to get paid, right? Because likes don't pay the bills. Getting paid pays the bills. And I'm married and I have a daughter, right? And I want to, you know, I want to live in freedom and I want them to have the best medical care and fly first class and live in my million dollar house and, and make sure that my wife and daughter are taken care of and be charitable and not worry about bills on a daily basis. Wealthy clients do that for you. The golden mic will do that for you. Followers and listeners will not. Right. Makes sense. hundred percent. We have to reach out to our ideal customers and interview them. Right. Talk about what they want to share to a hundred percent. One hundred percent. And here's the thing that I learned, dude, from, from this. Can we, can we go like principle based for a second? Sure. Like definitely. not tactics or hacks, but like principle, like sure. client typically sure. psychology based proven principles that never change. All right. Mm -hmm. What I learned is that every single decision, every sales decision, business decision, every decision that people make is particularly wealthy clients, people at the top, the Russell Brunson is they make every decision based on status. Hmm. is this going to lower my status or increase my status? And when you hmm. take Josh 40, like, dude, I'm, I'm a nobody farm kid from Indiana. I didn't graduate. Like, I, I barely graduated high school. I did not go to college. I dropped off at a, a half a semester, right? Like, I, I, I grew up in the middle of nowhere. When you take that kid with not out a golden mic, I'm a nobody. I don't have status, right? Nobody wants to talk to me. But when you take that kid, when you take me, you, and you insert a golden mic when you insert a platform that is about topics that that is positioned correctly you massively drastically increase your status to where now opportunities exist simply because or opportunities um are uh happy are, are created right you have opportunities that are there simply because you have a platform that's it Absolutely. and like that's the entire premise of the golden mic if you do that, you can connect with anyone. Right? I've connected with so, so many, seven, multi, seven, eight, multi, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs. I interviewed a billionaire, her. I interviewed Mr. Beast's manager, right? At one point, wow. I, I mean like crazy people simply because there was a platform set up not to try to differentiate on how do I become the, get the most views. If you're trying to get the most views, you're competing with all the top podcasts. If you're trying to boast about your success, you're competing with the Russell Brunson's and Alex Hermosi's of the world. It's not going to work. But when you create a platform that isn't about you, it's about like your ideal clients and what they want to talk about. That's status driven. That's principled. That's golden. When you create a golden mic, now you get to be in a category of your own and have opportunities that nobody else is getting. That makes sense? Absolutely. hundred percent. I agree with it. That's we the golden have mic. to increase the perceived value. Like we have to uplift the status, push them. Right, like uh, appreciate the person whom we want to connect, interview, and that's how I got connected with the billionaire Naveen Jain. Also, right after the 10x growth conference, I saw him on the stage, and I saw I need to add value to him. Reached out to him with like very less followers, 500 subscribers. He said, "Yes, let's do it." We never know <laughs> they're connect with us. But but if you don't have a podcast, if you don't have a platform, it's like, never right, like if I were to reach out to. Grant Cardone or, or Russell Brunson or, you know, name your person. And I were to be like, if I were to meet him and I would be like, Hey, do you want to go get coffee? Do you want to go jam out on a zoom call? Do you want to like coach me for an hour for free? Like, are they saying yes to that? No, not at all. Because it doesn't benefit them. hundred percent. hundred percent. But if it benefits them, if you have a microphone, if you have a podcast, if you have a golden mic, right? Yes. Now Absolutely. we can make it benefit them. Yes, because of that, I actually came to USA also last year. Anik Singhal invited me to his mastermind, Learn and the webinar con, right? 100% free. I did, don't need to pay even $1, <laughs> right? Where others have been paying $25,000 for that mastermind because of the connection and the podcasting. I got opportunity to work with him yeah. <laughs> through the podcast, right? Right, because you have status, because there's trust to connect with you, right? That's the Absolutely. premise of the golden mic.
absolutely and that was so amazing that's what and uh, that's what i want to make sure that more people implement just the same thing i'm trying to tell to so many people in india and why do you think it is so important for every ceo entrepreneur right does not matter how much busy some entrepreneurs tell i don't have time some coaches tell coaches and consultants think podcast is waste of time doctors think even though they have so much busy schedule right they work in two three clinics i've spoken with so many dermatologists eye specialists and uh, pediatrician and engineers also they're not getting proper jobs also ai is like take, taking over the world right and still they are not starting a podcast i have told hundreds of times but they haven't done what what do you want to tell them <laughs> imagine imagine that you had a car and you every single day had to drive 5 hours or every week had to drive 5 hours to work every back and forth at each week 10 hours of your time right if i were to just tell you hey you should get a plane you should go go get your pilot's license or 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 buy an airplane so that you can go and enjoy life and get good views and go on vacation and all of that if right and that's why I told you that you should get a plane. You would look at that and go, I don't need a plane. That's a waste of my time. That's a distraction, right? Yep. But if I were to come to you and say, hey, look, why don't you just get a plane? You can get from where you're at right now to where you need to be. That normally takes you five hours in the car and you can get there in 30 minutes, right? So you'll save, you know, nine hours of time every single week, right? And people think you're even more successful because you fly in a plane everywhere those are two True. very different pitches right yes. they both involve getting a plane yes. what most what i would tell for most people is that the way that you've been told to think about a podcast how you've been presented a podcast has been fundamentally wrong or unhelpful to you the way that you've been told to use a podcast you're at, you are absolutely correct that it is a distraction and it will not help you because what you've been told is you've been told to go and use a podcast, like get a plane for luxury purposes or just for, for pleasure. That's not how that that's not what you should use the plane for. That's not what you should use the podcast for. Right. But when you think about the podcast differently, when you think about the golden microphone differently and you go, wait a second, I don't need a plane for pleasure. I need a plane to save nine hours of my time each time, increase my status to where now I can, you know, People know that I have a private plane. I get more opportunities. I save nine hours of time. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to save time. I'm going to get more deals, right? That's how you should be thinking about the golden mic. And so if you've thought about a podcast before and you've said, I don't understand how this makes me money. Good. That's the right question to be asking. And most podcasts, most people that teach podcasts, they don't use it to get to make money, right? Like they don't, they don't know. And so it's just a distraction. It's a time waster. But what I would tell you is, huh? They do it like a hobby. They do it as like a hobby, right? They do it as, a, oh, nice to have. But if you instead approach a podcast to say, wait a second, a podcast is nothing special. There's no one, a podcast isn't magical, right? It's how we use it. And when you can go, wait a second, if I have a podcast that amplifies me, that, that increases my status, that creates opportunities with wealthy people and successful people that I would not have without it, that allows me to charge more, that allows me to work with better clients. And I have to do that not by adding in anything else, not by adding in new messaging or a new product, but rather simply using it to amplify what's already in your, who you are and in your business already, right? Wouldn't you want that? Absolutely. Right, right? like I don't have, I don't do a tons of editing. Like for, I've done over 400, almost, yeah, like 415 or 416 episodes, right? Like for the first several hundred episodes, I didn't do any editing, like none. I would literally just hit record, would do the podcast and chop off the first couple of seconds, the last couple of seconds, and hit post. That's it, right? I didn't take massive amounts of time out of my day. I didn't, it wasn't a big expense. It only made me money and it only increased my status and created opportunities. And so I would say to you, I would say the number one most important thing right now is for you in your business, right? We're, we're, we're in a crazy economic time right now. We're in a, a weird political climate. Uh, the, there's uncertainty around the world. There's wars, right? Economy isn't great. People are spending less money, right? The number one thing, particularly with wealthy clients, 
right? That people are looking for right now is trust, right? And trust is at an all time low. People have been scammed and taken advantage of. You know, people are, are losing money. They're, they're people need to trust you. And right now, like having a platform that increases trust, increases your status, right? Like having something that, that, that gives you an unfair opportunity or an unfair advantage over everyone else that doesn't have it, that's the golden mic, right? And that's how I would approach it. So I would tell every entrepreneur, if you want opportunities with wealthy people, if you want to increase your status, increase your network, increase the quality of, of clients that you work with, right? If you want to up-level your life and network and business as a whole, using the assets you already have, then you need a golden mic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Loved it. Right? Like everybody has to start it. It's one of the biggest leverage today what it can create. Literally with no money, someone can start it. And it's also like one of the best one person business. You don't need 100 member team, 10 member team to start a podcast, right? You alone, if you have that will, they can start it. I think that's a great point. And uh, I, I will say this. I made my first million dollars as a solo entrepreneur uh, with a podcast and one Absolutely. service. Right. I will be asking you that question now. Okay, great. Cool. Josh, yeah. If you were to, if you have lost all your money, name, connections, everything, right? And if you were to rebuild everything from ground zero, only thing is you have your knowledge with you. What will be your strategy and what will be your offer and how will you reach your $1 million? Is it even practically possible with the, the golden mic method or whatever you have created now uh, to reach the... Uh, to reach that level? Well, I, it's a great question. I, I, uh, I think it's phrased well. So I'm going to start with this. One of the things that I believe that coaches do a terrible job at, and for context, I love the coaching industry. I'm a product of the coaching industry. I don't like the fact that people hate on it so much, right? Like I, I think that the coaching industry and the online education space and online services is an overwhelmingly net positive to the world. I know it's easy and fun to make fun of because it's, you know, public, but like, I think, I think there's so much good that's done there. Right. One of the things that I think coaches do poorly is not only articulating yet, yeah, like, yeah, we all articulate well, who we can help, but who we don't help and what we don't do. Okay. And I will tell you the golden mic method is for people that are under $3 million. Right. Like if you're over three million dollars, like this probably isn't for you unless you're you know, using it for JVs or different things of that nature. Right. But I've taken it to three million bucks. I've had multiple people. I mean, we just had our first guy in, in eight months, by the way, across a million dollars. Right. Like so if you're under three million dollars in revenue, you're trying to make um, your first million bucks or your next million dollars and you want high profit, you want a team or like a, a, a very lean team. Right. You want to work with the best clients with the least complexity possible. Right. That's a lot of ask. Right. But it's possible. If, if that's what you're looking for, then I would use the golden mic method. And here's the, the exact approach that I would take. Right. I would go and sit down and I firmly believe that high ticket, expensive offers, no matter what, no matter the economy, no matter what is the best way to go. Because you work with the best clients, you have the most margin for error, like you've got plenty of money in case something goes wrong, you can focus all of your time on delivering a great result. I think that low ticket, particularly for beginners, I think low ticket is very dangerous, right? If you're a service provider or a coach, it's very dangerous because you don't make enough margin if something goes wrong. You don't get paid enough to make sure that you do a good job, right? And like, that's a problem. Like if, for example, if, if, if you know, let me ask you, do your bills come due every month? Yes, absolutely. Every single month, right? So let's say that you need $6,000 every month to pay your bills, right? If yeah. you don't make $6,000, if you don't have it, like they're going to come shut your power off, right? Like, so you need $6,000. So yes. every month you need to make six grand. So with selling low ticket offers, you work really, really hard. You sell a bunch of low ticket offers. You make six grand. If something goes wrong, you don't have the money. You don't have the ability to go and make sure that it actually works or, or to fix it, right? Yeah. But if I were to need $6,000 and I were to sell something for $18,000, that would mean that I could literally go and serve one client, not a bunch, one client for 90 straight days, do nothing but to serve them for 90 straight days if it took that long and I would have all my expenses covered, right? Yeah. And if you're working with broke people, it's really hard to get results. 
But if you charge a lot of money, if you charge high ticket prices, you solve rich people problems, rich people prices, solve the problems of the rich and they will make you one of them, right? If you solve rich people problems, they've got resources, they've got assets to work with, way easier to get them results, right? Just so, and I'll, 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 a quick example on that, and I, and I promise this ties into the, the question, but like quick example, sure. when I would do my services, I sold a, a Facebook group launch service. I charged $5,000 for it. I sold it to beginners. Took a long time to, to, to make sales. It was, it was hard to get them to pay the five grand. And on average, I would make them about $15,000 in 30 to 60 days. So mm -hmm. someone pays me five grand and 60 days later, I make them 15. Not bad, right? And three times their money. But I would work for 30 days, right? And within 60 days, we're making that money. Then yeah. I started selling to wealthy people, right? Then I had the golden mic. I got my first client, that Brad guy, right? Pays me 30 grand. And I charged $30,000 to Brad for the exact same service. Facebook group launch, same everything. We used the same strategy, same, uh, you know, same resources. We got him in the 60 days. We got him $400,000. That's how much we made him for the same process. So not only did I make six times more money, I got $400,000 worth of results instead of 15. Just... Would you rather give someone five grand and make 15 or 30 grand and make 400? 30 grand to make 400. Right. So wealthy clients, not only are they have more money, they pay you better. It's more ethical because by the way, if something goes wrong, you can actually focus on them, but you can get them the better results with the same effort. You with me? And so many people, we've been fed this lie, not on purpose, like, you know, growing up, I grew up trading time for money, right? If you made $8 an hour, you were in good, good. $12 an hour, you were in great. If you made a hundred grand in a year, you were balling, right? Mm -hmm. And we were just told that like, you know, you got to work really hard. And it's like, okay, that's great. But then you start playing in bigger, bigger worlds and you start thinking that you have to work harder to play up, up, play up here. And it's like, that's not how it works. And so we think yeah. that, you know, oh, I could never do that. Or what if I mess up? Or, or what if something goes wrong or whatever? It's like, well, if something goes wrong when you're working with the rich people, now you've got money, time, and resources to work with. Wouldn't you rather be there, right? Yes. Like, I'm a farm yes. kid, nobody who barely graduated high school. If I can do this, you can, right? So right. what I would do is I would go, and if I, if I, got, a, if I got one year to make a million bucks, right? I would mm -hmm. sit down and I would say, all right, what is the problem that a wealthy mm. person has. What's the problem that I know how to solve that right. directly correlates to me helping them make more money, right? I learned that from Dan Henry. I paid him $100,000. I went down to Costa Rica. We took a private helicopter or a helicopter to his private helicopter pad on the top of a mountain down to his mansion or whatever, right? And when I asked him, you know, I'm like, hey, how do you sell stuff? He's like, dude, people want three things and three things only. Made $50 million, only three things. They want to make more money. They want to have more sex or they want to look hot. That's it. If you're in the wealth space, you sell money. So I go, okay, cool. You must tie your offer to money. And so I go, okay, great. I would sit down and I go, what's the problem that I know how to solve that I know if I were to solve that problem, it would directly lead to my client making more money, right? So I'd find that skill set. I'd figure out what that problem is. Then I would go launch a golden mic. I would mm -hmm. figure out the angle for my golden mic and I would say, okay, who's my ideal client? Who is the wealthy people? Who are the people with money that have this problem that I know how to solve? Making money is so simple. You just solve problems and get paid for them. So like if someone makes a million dollars a year versus $50,000 a year, who can afford to pay you more money? Like, the guy that makes a million bucks, right? Go target him. So I'd sit down and I'd go, okay, cool. Who makes a million dollars a year? Or who's rich? Who's wealthy that has this problem? And I'd go, what do they want to talk about? Right? Yes. And then I would reach out to them and I would offer to have them come talk about that and to promote them and their ideas and make them look amazing. Right. Absolutely. And then I would get them on, I'd build trust, I'd have the relationship. And then after the podcast was over, I would have a conversation with them, get to know them a little bit and show them how I could solve the problem. And as long as, as long as I can show them how I'm going to make them more money than I cost them, they'll pay me every time. Wow. That's, that's it. Incredible. That's amazing. It's like building the connection, building the trust, talk to the wealthy people who have the money, uh, take big money and help them get great positive ROI and they will help us grow and we will automatically reach 
uh, a million dollars. And and can I can I talk just a little bit more on that that process right there because I think you had sure. on a good point. Sure, sure. So I don't come from like I said I don't come from money. I, I, I it's not like I have a background in in this stuff. I'm not naturally good at sales, right? Like I did door to door sales one year for the whole summer and I only made one sale. It sucked, right? Not I'm not naturally good at making money in sales, right? This is a learned thing. I just got sick and tired of being broke. And I was like, I'm going to study sales psychology for a second, right? Yes. When I got started in the Instagram space, or, uh, you know, in entrepreneurship, I got started in Instagram space, right? And so I offered Instagram followers. I was like, hey, I can help grow your Instagram account. And so how I saw myself was I was the guy that got you more Instagram followers. Now, let me ask you, if you're a w w rich person or if you're somebody at all and you're in business, do you want Instagram followers or do you want more money? More money, definitely. More money, right? So the only reason you want Instagram followers is if the Instagram followers are going to turn into clients and you need to make more money, right? Yes. But I saw myself as somebody that was someone that delivered Instagram followers. I didn't see myself as someone that made people more money, right? Yep. And so when people would come and ask me, what do you do? I'd go, well, I, I help you grow Instagram followers. Now, if I were to ask somebody, will you pay me $25,000 for you to, or uh, for me to get you more Instagram followers? How, yeah. how excited are they? No, very less excited. They're not, that is right, exactly, right? And so yes. what I learned through Dan Henry and through you know, studying psychology or whatever is simply this. People will always do what is in their own perceived best self-interest. Right? So if they think it will benefit them, they don't care if you win, as long as they're gonna win, right? Yep. And so I was like, okay, what I'm presenting myself as is I'm gonna help get you followers and you're gonna give me a bunch of money. Who seems to have a bigger deal, a better deal there? Me getting the money or them getting followers? Who wins? Like they win if you tell them, if you are able to give them the money. Ah, uh, but like, if that's all the information you had, I win, they lose, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. $25,000 is worth more than a bunch of followers, right? Yeah, 100%. Like how you perceive it to tell them, right? Like the messaging, that's the most important thing. Right. So it's in their own perceived best self-interest to not give you the money because it's better to have the money than the Instagram followers. Does that make sense? Absolutely. 100%. And so I see so many people that are, they ask the question, okay, well, Josh, how do you transition after the interview, you know, and, and you know, talk about money or don't they feel like weird that like now you're trying to sell them something afterwards or whatever? I'm like, I have done hundreds of interviews. I have sent hundreds of, of Google Docs and, and, you know, done hundreds of probably thousands at this point, but hundreds of, of pitches, right? Like I've never had anybody mad at me for offering to solve their problem, but there was a core mm -hmm. shift that happened, right? Mm -hmm. I had a coach one time, I was at a very low point in my life. And she said, Josh, I'm summarizing for the sake of time. She said, Josh, the reason that you're not where you wanna be in life right now is because you don't see yourself as that person yet. You still see yourself as this person here. You still see yourself as you know, inadequate and, and you know, the farm kid broke, nobody, whatever, right? And she taught me this concept of identity. She taught me this concept of the way you see yourself is what you're actually gonna put off. It's how others will ultimately perceive you as well, right? And what I learned was when, what you gotta do is you've gotta shift your mentality to say, wait a second, I don't offer Instagram followers, right? I don't, I don't give people more followers. I don't do Facebook lives. I mean, or, you know, Facebook, launch Facebook groups. I don't do five day challenges. I don't, I don't do ads. That's not what you do, right? What you do, what I did, what I shifted was, I make people more, more money. That's I what I do. That. That's who I am, right? And so now it was like, wait a second. I know 100% the mentality that I have coming in is if somebody pays me money, I make them more money than whatever they paid me. Guaranteed. Like 100%, like it, I'm absolutely certain of that. So if that's how I see myself, then I would have to figure out a path for every client that I deal with to where that could be true, right? Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be a liar. And so yes. when I started seeing myself that way, I went, wait a second. I don't offer Instagram followers. I don't offer Facebook. I make people more money. So now when this client comes to me, and let's say I do Instagram followers, I'll just use that example again. I don't say I'm going to help you get more Instagram followers, right? I'm going to say, hey, my goal is to help you make a hundred thousand more dollars by signing clients. Mm -hmm. And they go, how are you going to do that? 
And I go, I'll tell you how, but understand that whatever I use, that's not important. What's important is, is that I make you more money because otherwise it's not worth it for you, right? So my objective first and foremost is how do I make you more money than what I cost? How do I make you hundred grand, right? Or whatever the number is. I do that by getting Instagram followers. And what makes me different is why everybody else is focused on the amount of followers that they get you or, you know, how fast or whatever. I make sure we get you the right ones. And we make sure that the way we get them and the system that we install, we get the followers, we turn them into clients so that you get paid. Now, let me ask you, if I were to come to that person now, and instead of saying, you're going to pay me 25 grand, I'm going to get you Instagram followers. Instead, you say, hey, listen, you're going to hire me for 25,000 bucks. I'm going to make you $100,000 by helping you get clients from Instagram followers. This message sounds perfect. Is that, is it in their own best interest for them to give me the $25,000 now? Yes. Why? Because they're making forex than what they're paying you. Right. Because they're going to make more than what they have to give up. Right. Their life gets better. They're the winners in the deal. We both win. And I call that right there, when you can make an offer where there's uh, where both people win, I call that mutual benefit, right? Like if you can, everything that you do, you look for mutual benefit, right? You can structure your offers to where both parties win and they feel like you're doing them a favor. They feel like they're getting the deal, right? Then yes. it's in their own best interest to give you money and people will always do what is in their own perceived best self-interest. Make sense? Absolutely. And so for most of my life, I struggled. I felt unworthy. I felt inadequate. I could, I never understood why anyone would pay me tens of thousands of dollars for Instagram followers or for Facebook groups or for, you know, marketing services or whatever. Cause in my head, I was like, it, why would, it's way more beneficial for their money is worth way more than this random thing I made up in my head. And when it's phrased like that, it is. But when I shifted my mentality and I said, wait a second, I'm not special. I just got to look at principles of the universe that never change. I got to go, how do I make this a win for them? How do I make it to where they win? Like they, they'd feel, uh, Alex Ramos, they'd feel stupid to say no to where I win, they win, and they feel like they're winning more. Make a mutual benefit That's offer. True. Nobody ever gets mad if you offer to make their life better. 100%, 100%. I love that. And Thanks. that's what I would do to make a million bucks in a year. That's so amazing. <laughs> the answer what you gave this itself can be converted into a book and someone can actually go and start implementing it uh, yeah. so that <laughs> they learn like like how uh, Russell Brunson, you can come to one of our yeah. workshops we got workshops on this we do and I, I teach it live and I mean like or listen to the podcast right like my goal is to help people be free man like I know what it's like mm -hmm. to I know what it's like to be broke I know what it's like to worry about the price of gas and groceries every single time you that you go out and and, and do I have the money for it and look at the price of the you know the food menu Right. Like it sucks. That's scarcity. Right. And, and, and that's very, very real. But I'll tell you, there's a different world when you sell the wealthy clients, when you use the golden mic method, when you enter this different reality, like right. money is different. Life changes. I can't tell you the last time I I don't even know the price of gas. Like literally, I have no I have no clue. Right. I mean, I drive a Tesla now, too. But like whatever. Right. Like I don't look at the price. We just go to the grocery store. We put in the cart. We go. And I don't care if it's five dollars or twenty dollars. Who cares? Right. Because my focus isn't there. My focus is on solving problems, and getting paid for them there. That's freedom. Right. And like money isn't the end goal. Money's not gonna make you happy. But that that ability to have the freedom to be free from worry and, and to not worry about those things, to escape scarcities, to step into certainty, to become the person that you don't do what you do. You solve problems for people. Right. You you help people make more money. Right. You make people's lives better. And because of that, your life gets better. That's my goal. That's what I want to help people do, because I know what that feels like. And it sucks when you're not there. It's the most amazing feeling ever when you are. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love that. And just the next question is like, how do we create like a high ticket offer, like fifteen thousand dollars and above and how many problems we need to solve? Because I see a lot of people. Uh, sell a hundred dollar product, thousand dollar product, six thousand dollar product. After that, they feel, they believe they cannot sell. And second thing is they feel like very few people can actually buy it. If the price is hundred or two hundred dollars, lot of people can buy, it, right? If the price is like fifteen thousand dollars, who can buy it, right? Typical person cannot buy it, right? It's very rare. It's very difficult to find. Is it like practically possible for someone who is watching from India also to charge like fifteen thousand dollars for an offer? 
Yeah, uh, this is a good question, right? There's a lot of um, a lot of misconceptions around this for sure, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of confusion when there doesn't need to be, right? You're you're absolutely right. So, I'll tell you this. Um, listen, man, like, did you become an entrepreneur because you want to build a hundred million dollar company and have a big, massive five hundred person team and you know, like, change the world like no one's ever done it before or whatever? Or like, was your first immediate goal like you just want to? be financially free and make an impact with the people that you've touched and change the life of your family. Yes. Make an impact, live a great life, travel the world, do a good life to the family. Be free, right? Yep. I'm in the same boat. And so like, I look at this from the lens when I'm, I'm going to speak to that entrepreneur, right? I'm not speaking mm -hmm. to the entrepreneur that wants to sell, you know, build a hundred million dollar company. I've never built a hundred million dollar company. If you want to build a hundred million dollars, do not listen to me. Do not listen to me if you want to build a hundred million dollar company. No clue what I'm doing when it comes to that. But I do know how to make a couple million bucks in profit, right? I do know how to do it without a data. I do know how to sell stuff for lots of money, right? So what I look at is I go, well, let's just say the target's a million dollars. Basic math, dude. Call it millionaire math. I think that's what Dan Henry calls it, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like I can sell, you know, a hundred dollar product, and how many people do I gotta sell? Ten thousand. Okay. Ten yes. I can sell a thousand dollar product and I got to sell it to a thousand people. I can sell a ten thousand dollar product and I can sell it to a hundred people. I can sell a twenty five thousand dollar product and I can sell it to forty people, right? I can sell a hundred thousand dollar product. I got to sell it to ten people, right? Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And so, there's not one right way. It's more preferred. But I'll tell you, if you want to sell stuff for lots of money, understand that it's much easier to sell a few people at a high price than it is to sell a lot of people at a low price. And I know it doesn't seem like that when you're starting out. I know it doesn't seem like that maybe when you're in India and you're like, okay, but like, just, do people really have that amount of money? There's so much money in the world. Stop playing in the world of scarcity. Stop serving broke clients. Get a golden mic. Come to the world of the wealthy here for a second. These people have money. $15,000, nothing, okay? And so I look at that and go, I don't need lots of people at 15,000. I need whatever that is. 75 and I made a million bucks, right? Or whatever the number is. Okay. So I grew up thinking that money followed effort, trading time for money. It doesn't, right? Money follows outcome, it follows value, right? It doesn't follow effort. And Russell Brunson, right, the goat of marketing, he said something so fascinating one time. He goes, Keep in mind, he gets up on stage, we're at Funnel Hacking Live, we're all sitting there, he's in front of like five, 6,000. These are like his top fans, top buyers, right? And he looks at them all and he goes, how many of you would like to know what I teach inside of my $250,000 mastermind? And everyone's like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's what I mean. He goes, awesome. Go buy .com Secrets. It's free, just pay shipping. Read the book and you'll know exactly what I teach. And he's like, everyone's like, what? He says, listen, people will pay more money for the same thing packaged differently, right? So he's like, I teach the same thing in my books as I do in my 97 courses as I do at 10,000, 25, 50,000, 100,000. It's all the same. It's just packaged and delivered differently, right? And so what I have found is that if you want to solve or if you want to sell something for lots and lots of money, okay, mm -hmm. is that... Whatever it is that you're good at, that's more, that's good enough. But when I asked Dan Henry, when I was down at his house, I paid him hundred grand. I said, Dan, what's the difference between selling something for $25,000 and a hundred thousand dollars? It's a big difference. And he looks at me and he goes, well, that's easy. Just give them less stuff. And I went, wait, hold on. I think you have that backwards. I said a hundred. Like, go up. Like, yeah. He goes, the more expensive it is, the less stuff you give them. And I go, well, that doesn't make any sense. He goes, yes, it does. Here's why. Because the more expensive something is, the more someone is buying certainty than anything else. Absolutely. So, certainty and the outcome, the more higher the chances of success. Right. So if you want to sell something for $15,000, find a problem that you know how to solve something that you are absolutely 100% certain that you can solve for somebody, right? Maybe you can you know, solve the problem. They're not getting enough leads in their business. You can solve the problem. Maybe they uh, aren't converting well, right? Maybe they need a better offer. Maybe they need uh, 
you know, maybe their, their sales team isn't converting. Well. Whatever. Find the problem. And then go, okay, who in this whole world of billions of people, literally billions, who in this world, if I were to solve that problem for them, that's worth more than $15,000 for or two. That's it. And if you can say, okay, well, this person here, if I solve that problem for them, it's only worth 500 bucks, right? If you were to go and you were to say like, for example, um, house cleaning, for example, right? My time, Josh Forty's time is worth roughly a thousand dollars an hour, right? That's roughly like what I make, uh, uh, in my, uh, in, you know, in my business, right? It's a thousand bucks an hour. Okay. So house cleaning, if you were to go to a, a bro, let's say you're really, really good at cleaning houses. If you were to go and offer to clean somebody's house that makes $50,000 a year, maybe they make, I don't know what that is, 20 bucks an hour. And it were to, mm -hmm. and it were to go and you were to clean it once a week, it would take you two hours to clean it. That means every week, every month it's eight hours of their time. Let's call it 10 hours a month. So 10 hours a month that you're saving them. If somebody only makes $20 an hour, you saved them $200 of their time. But if you come to me and you save me 10 hours of my time, how much money did you save me? Or did you, how, much, how much time, how much money is that worth $10, me? $10,000. $10,000, right? So by cleaning my house, I can afford to pay you $100 an hour to come clean my house because I'm going to make 10000 right? during that time or whatever. Right. So the same problem is different. It's more valuable to me to have my house clean than it is to, for someone that not, doesn't make that much money. Money does not follow effort. You're gonna work the same amount of hours, right? Money follows outcome, right? Follows value. It's more valuable to me. The, your buyer gets to determine the value. So if you wanna create something for $15,000 in, in the, simplest, the simplest form, it's very simple. Find a problem that you know how to solve that you're 100% certain. Certainty is the most important thing. Are you 100% certain you can solve it? Number two, find someone that if you solve that problem, uh, you, you, uh, it would be worth more than what you want to charge. And then three, use a gold mic to get in front of them and then offer it to them and say, I will do this for you. I will solve this problem. And here's how it's going to make you more money than what it costs you. That is it. Don't overcomplicate it. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll end on this final, I'll, I'll end this thought and, and I, I've got some time, so we're good. But like, sure, I'll, sure. I'll, end, I'll end on that final thought here on, for this topic, which is, dude, I've overcomplicated success my entire life. Success is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. There was a dude, when the internet first came out, he made a million dollars, it's called the million dollar homepage. He would offer to upload pictures for people online for $1 per pixel. And you made a million bucks. And you're like, but like, what, what, what do you mean? Like a picture is like a lot of, a lot of pixels. Yes. So if a picture was a thousand pixels, he'd make a thousand bucks. It's like, why would somebody, why would somebody want a picture on the internet? Who cares? They didn't want a picture on the internet and they were willing to pay for it. Right? He made a million dollars. Right? The guy that invented the, the pool, the pool noodle, the floaty pool noodle, right? $10 million or more. Right? The pool noodle, right? Success is simple, but we overcomplicate it so much simply because we've been taught lies about money. We've been taught lies that like money follows effort and it doesn't. I'm not saying don't work hard. You got to work stupid hard, right? But money doesn't follow effort. Money follows value that you create. And because you, the buyer itself, because, because we don't get to determine the value the buyer does, by changing the buyer, by selling to a wealthy person, you can make exponentially more money with the same exact amount of effort. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. And Josh, I have a question over here, like follow-up question for the same question. Like when we reach out based on our certainty, we know definitely we can help them out and we can charge $15,000. Whereas the uh, prospect tells, hey, I can find the same solution for like $1,000 or like $1,500, right? Which is 10x lesser. What should we reply to them? When you sell using the golden mic method, I learned this from Sam Ovens, okay? So Sam was going to mastermind, right? When we were there, he's like, hey, the reason, like, the reason most people struggle to sell high ticket 
yeah. uh, versus the reason that I have, uh, you know, a hundred person mastermind at $36,000 with, with an eight month wait list, right? Is it because wow. amateurs, beginners, right? They focus on all the wrong things. They focus on price or button color or the words on the page or what's included or whatever. He's like, that doesn't matter, right? He's like, what I do is I focus on how my ideal client thinks, mm. right? Mm. How they think. Wealthy people, the people that are able to pay you 15,000 bucks, they don't buy the same way that broke people do. Broke people focus on price, right? What I've learned about wealthy people is number one, wealthy people buy from people that they trust. They buy from their friends. That's the first and foremost, most important thing. Perfect example, I had a friend about $150,000 sports car, 150 grand, comes over, show me off, whatever. Oh, so, you know, super cool. I'm like, dude, how much did you pay for it? And he goes, I paid 150 grand. And I was like, dude, literally right down the road, there is a car, same car, same makes them, whatever, right? Same year, everything. That was 130 grand, right? And his response to me was, yeah, but I knew the guy. If anything goes wrong, I know I'm taken care of. He's my guy, right? Trust. He buys from his friends. He's not buying because it's the cheapest. He's buying because he knows that he's taken care of because he trusts the guy. It's his friend. And if anything goes wrong, you can count on him. That's the first thing. Number two is wealthy people say no to almost everything, but they will almost never say no to having their problem solved, right? They don't buy for the massive outcomes. They buy when they're certain that their problem is actually going to be solved, right? And so somebody else can offer the same exact service that you do. But if they're offering it as a service, if they're offering get more Instagram followers, when you're offering make $100,000, they might offer the same service. But guess what? You're phrasing it as here's how I'm going to solve your problem and get you the result. They're offering a deliverable. Rich people don't care about the deliverables. They care about is the problem is going to be solved. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Love that. It was amazing. And then third, hold on, sorry. One more thing. One more thing. And then third is that yeah. they buy when they're certain. They don't need a long time to make decisions. So what I would yeah, tell you- They're very quick and fast. Huh? They're very quick and fast, like how even Sam Owen spot his uh, Manhattan- His penthouse, uh, right? 15 uh, minutes. I saw your video on Instagram. Five minutes, there were 15 minutes, he made a $5 million buying decision, right? So if Please someone see. goes, comes to you and says, hey, I can find the same thing 10 times cheaper over here, what that means is that they don't understand like you've not communicated the value of what they do. They still see you as a commodity just like everybody else. And you've got to get the focus off of the price and back on the problem that you're going to solve, the outcome that you're going to create, the certainty of it, and become that solution. And then they'll never, they're not going to question the price once you get to that point because you're going to make them more money than what it is that they uh, are going to pay you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love that. And Josh, this is the question which I have. You have interviewed hundreds of successful entrepreneurs, billionaires, millionaires, work with Russell Branson, learn from Sam Owens, all like some of the top thought leaders. What is the common trait, character, habit you have seen very common in most of the hyper successful entrepreneurs? Um, so interesting. I, I think that there's a lot of things that people think are common, but are really not. I think that, well, first off, you define what you mean by successful, right? Because everybody has a different version of that. But in the terms of financial success and business success, financial and success, success, anyone who, whose net worth is at least a million dollars and yeah. above. I think that the most successful people in the world have identified who their network of people is, who, they're, who the people that they want to surround themselves uh, with are. And they are insanely intentional about getting around and hanging out and thinking like and providing value to them and not focused on anyone else. Everyone has a different way about going about doing that. But, but knowing the network, knowing the people that you need to be around and, and being intentional about that small group and that small types of people that you need to be around, whatever that looks like, is a common trait of not just the people that are millionaires, but like like very successful people, right? It's, it's a game of relationships. And once again, it looks different for everybody, right? But it's a game of relationships and you don't need to know everybody. You need to know the right people. And I think that the, the most successful people have identified the people in their life that they need to know that they need to be around and are very, very intentional about hanging out with those people, which once again is why I love the golden mic because it gets you in front of those people. 
absolutely that's so amazing now we are uh, i will be doing the rapid round like one line of questions are you ready for it josh i'm ready <laughs> great what are the top uh, top 3 to 5 books like you will recommend everyone to uh, read like if they want to really uh, become successful and uh, make a world a better place to live as an entrepreneur three to five books yes I mean, uh, this is going to sound cliche, but I absolutely mean it. Number one is the Bible. Um, but outside of religious books, uh, my number one favorite is The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. Um, these are books that changed my life, right? So I, I think that you know, that's The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. Psycho-Cybernetics, um, mm -hmm. fantastic. Expert yes. Secrets by Russell Brunson. Uh, How to Build a Movement and, and Understand That. Presuasion. The entire premise of how I basically do everything that I sell. The concept is, you know, what happens right before a decision determines the decision, uh, and that's by Robert Caldini. And uh, I don't know. Probably those four. That's where I'd start. Okay. Oh, and no, and hundred million dollar offers by Alex Ramosi. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, those five. Right. And, and my next question is like, does basically a you know, relationship partner play an important role in your life? Like, like what? having the relationship partner, the girlfriend or like the boyfriend, right? Do they play an important role in our career, in our growth, in our business? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm married uh, to my wife. She's amazing. We have a seven month old daughter. Mm -hmm. I think that the person that you choose to spend the rest of your life with uh, your life partner is the outside of your, outside of your religion, outside of your faith, whatever you decide, you know, as that, but in this life, I think that that is the single most important decision uh, or impactful decision that you can ever make. Um, my wife is not an entrepreneur. She does, she's not in the business world, but she is my best friend, my ride or die. And she is the, 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 the person that has helped me become successful and who I am today more than anybody else. Um, like she is incredible. So a hundred percent, it plays a massive, massive role, bigger than we realize in almost every way. Absolutely. Absolutely love that. Every great man appreciates like the, the better half, the wife, the girlfriend, right? That's amazing. And I think That's that if you're serious about them, don't date for too long. Put a ring on it, get married, commit, be all in, right? I'm I'm a big I'm a big believer and a big big uh, proponent for marriage. I think marriage is uh, a fundamentally good thing. Absolutely love that. Next is like, how do you retain the customer connection with all these top one percent? Right? It's like some people do the interview after that again. The connection is not there because once they're so big, if they're a billionaire or like millionaire, how do we uh, re retain, talk to them, connect with them? That's probably the best question that you asked out of all of them, right? It's fantastic. I wish I had more time to go into it. I'll tell you this. I didn't understand why pe successful people were friends with me. I didn't understand powerful relationships, so I went and studied it. And when it came to powerful relationships and friendships, I found that there were three common, uh, three, three commonalities, three things that made up a powerful relationship. Number one is shared values, right? Like, do you share values with the person? That's the reason you're going to be friends in the first place, right? But a lot of people can do that. You can connect with someone on values on the podcast or you know, at an event or whatever. If that's all you do, the friendship will die out. You will not be able to stay in touch. The second thing, which is what will continue and maintain the relationship, is mutual benefit, meaning both people's lives must get better as the relationship progresses. Typically speaking, in the world of business, that means you pay them a lot of money or they pay you a lot of money, right? You got to keep solving their problems. And you, they, you get paid for it or they've got to solve your problems and you get, or they, or they get paid for it, right? So figure out how they, you can make their life better and continue to solve problems. Uh, the most direct way is just to do business together, but there's lots of different ways to, to go about doing that. And then the third thing is consistency over time or trust, meaning be who you say you're going to be and don't just change. And a funny example of it is, you know, Kanye West and Adidas had a great relationship. They had shared values. Both people's lives got better. And then Kanye went crazy and said, you know, came out and was like, I love Hitler, right? It's like, you can't say that, dude. Like you changed, you weren't consistent now and the relationship fell apart. So like, be who, I'm not saying don't grow, 
but I'm saying like, be who you say you're going to be, be someone of your word and like be someone that people can count on and trust. That's how you maintain the relationship. And, you know, I think the more tactical thing to answer your question there is just figure out how you can continue to make their life better and how, if they continue to say yes to that, your life improves from it as well. Absolutely. That's so, 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 so awesome. <laughs> I love that answer. And Josh, how can people connect with you if they were to learn about the golden mic method and if they want to talk to you or like learn from your whatever stuff you're doing and how they can make a world a better place to live? 100%. Um, Josh40.com. So my first name, my last name.com. We've got the podcast on there. We've got trainings on there. It's a very simple page. It's not complex at all, but it's got all the links on there for, uh, we do workshops. We're, we're just starting now. We're starting to do workshops at least twice a month, but maybe even once a week uh, that I live that I teach. We go really, really deep for like three or four hours. Um, that's the best place to learn. The YouTube channel is on there as well. And then if you just want to reach out and connect to me personally, we want to do a podcast or something. I'm very, very active on social media, particularly Instagram DMs and uh, uh, Facebook, my Facebook profile in, in the comments on there. So uh, you know, hit me up on Instagram. Once again, it's just at Josh Forty, first name, and my last name. Absolutely, guys. I highly recommend you to connect with Josh Forty and learn. Josh is someone whom I know since almost 2018, 2019, when Josh was uh, talking about the social media, how you can grow your following, how you can uh, make a world a better place to live, right? And uh, you can literally go and learn from Josh. Even like Russell Branson himself invites him at the funnel funnel hacking live event. And it's a crazy journey, young boy <laughs> who makes other like others dream uh, possible, right? And Josh, uh, and the next question is what I have is like, if I'm planning to do an event, right, in Bangalore, in India, and if I invite you as a speaker in that event where there are like hundreds, thousands of people, more than a thousand people coming, will you be interested in future any day to fly to Bangalore, India? <laughs> That's a bold question. I like it. I think, yeah, I think that I would be at least open to it. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that question. I've got a wife and daughter and schedules and all that. But I mean, if the event was right and we could make it work, I mean, listen, I love, I love serving entrepreneurs and uh, I love, you know, love providing, I, I love sharing the, the message and empowering people. So, you know, if it makes sense, I'm absolutely open to, uh, absolutely open to doing that. Yeah. I'll keep you posted about that. And any last words, Josh, uh, before like we conclude it, it was super amazing talking yeah. to you. Thank you for sharing your wonderful wisdom with all of us at the Real Knowledge Club Summit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would just, my final point on this, I think would be this, which is financial success, money, all that. It's not that complicated, right? We, we, we make it harder than it needs to be. I'm, I'm a nobody farm kid from Indiana, guys. Like I, I, I didn't go to, to school. I, like I said, I, I come from essentially nothing, right? Um, and so first, it's, it's not that complicated, right? You just study success and do it. That said, as someone now that has made a, a fair amount of money and, and hung out with a, a lot of successful people too, it doesn't mean much once you have it. And like, it means, much, it means a lot if you use it for good. And it, it means a lot if you use it for your purpose. But like at the end of the day, like success will be found, fulfillment will be found, your purpose will be found when you live out who you've been called to be, right? And so I would, I would implore anyone listening right now, oh, like go figure out who you are, go figure out what you believe, go figure out like, you know, what you've been called to do. And that might be like at the beginning, that might be literally just like right now, I don't know what my big picture plan is, but I know right now I've been called to take care of my wife and my family and, and, and pay off all my debt. Like maybe that's your purpose. Maybe that's your, 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 your driving factor right now. Great. Right. Like when you have a goal, when you have that type of purpose and you know who you are at a core, that is so much more fulfilling than making a bunch of money. And you should go make a lot of money. Like uh, money is awesome, right? I love living in, a, in, in my, uh, I live in a very nice house. I drive a Tesla, like all the things. Absolutely something you should strive for. But that in and of itself doesn't mean a whole lot if it's not tied to purpose. And I don't mean that as, as a cliche way. I mean that like you will literally wake up and be like, what does this all mean? But you can avoid all that and you can enjoy the journey. You can enjoy making money. You can actually find happiness and purpose and fulfillment. You can love every minute of it if you just start with what's important, which is who are you? What do you believe? What have you been called to do? And then align all your money and success with that. So that would be my advice to you. And uh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank and you, Josh. don't start a gold mic. Like you need a gold <laughs> mic. Yes, absolutely. Guys, 
do let us know what's your top three biggest takeaway. Post it in the comments. Do share it us. Take a screenshot. Tag Josh and like myself on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever. Let's make a world a better place to live, right? Let's create this talk show revolution, right? More and more people have to adopt, do it, make millions, make a world a better place to live. Give more, make more. And yep, once again, thank you everyone also for watching. And uh, yep, talk to you soon, Josh. Thank you once again. Bye-bye, guys. See you all.